Robert Yarber is an internationally known painter and photographer. He was born in Dallas, Texas in 1948. He earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Cooper Union College in New York in 1971 and a Master of Fine Arts degree from LSU in 1974. He has taught at the University of Texas in Austin, New York University, and the University of California. He currently teaches at Penn State University. He was awarded National Endowment for the Arts Fellowships in 1983 and in 1985. He has shown his work in solo and group exhibitions in galleries and museums in North and South America, Europe, and Japan. His work is in numerous public and private collections, including the Whitney Museum of Art, the Oakland Museum of Art, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, the Denver Art Museum, the Eli Broad Collection in Los Angeles, the Frederick R. Weissman Collection in Minneapolis, and the Ludwig Collection in Cologne, Germany. His work is represented by the Sonneband Gallery in New York City. Welcome, Robert, to Virginia Commonwealth University. You started your career as an artist at a very early age. What got you interested in painting? Uh, I'd always drawn as a young person, as a child, and uh, I uh, had a natural facility. Uh, spent many, many summer afternoons in, in Dallas growing up, working on elaborate drawings and maps and that sort of business. Uh, went to a museum school in high school where I was exposed to contemporary art and immediately took a great interest in it. Uh, this was at the Dallas Museum of Fine Arts. They had uh, a painting by Francis Bacon and I think at the time even had a retrospective of his work. This, was, this would have been in the uh, mid-60s. And by the end of high school was actually picked, one of the paintings was picked for, one of my paintings was picked for uh, an adult you know, statewide competition. The judge, the juror was uh, Richard Diebenkorn. So uh, I was a little bit of a wunderkind at the, that age of 16 or 17. And uh, so. And you uh, had been uh, to the museums in, in Dallas, and had you done any traveling to other museums and looked at other artists? My family wasn't sophisticated in art, so was, I'm still wondering how all that happened. But uh, between the Encyclopedia Britannica and a great interest in comic books and the kind of illustrations that kids like, you know, uh, Mad Magazine and what have you, together with just that, uh, and, and a little bit of, you know, what I saw in. Uh, religious illustrations. I was raised a Catholic, so one, one way or another I was shown the old masters just as illustrations for Bible stories and that sort of business, so I had a familiarity with that. Um, can you uh, name some of the artists that are probably more significant to you, more, more of the important artists in, in early development? Well, besides uh, Bacon and the German Expressionists, People I was looking at when I was a, 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 young, uh, a boy, you know, beginning to become interested in art. There were the regionalist artists of, of that era, you know, uh, after uh, uh, Thomas Hart Benton, uh, um, the Texas regionalists, who really were interesting because a lot of them had studied with Sequeiros and with the Mexican muralists. It makes sense, you know, you're a Texas artist in the 30s. You, went down and you study with the Mexican muralist, so I was also introduced at the age of 16 or 17 to Orozco and Sequeiros, and you might find a resonance of that in my work. I think you quite, quite likely would be. And uh, then as I went on to college in New York, uh, I uh, developed an interest in, in Italian painting, Baroque painting. Again, I don't know how. I guess it was just exposure to art history classes, and I was really taken with uh, the work of the Italian Baroque artists and try to see everything I could of that, of that kind of work. And the contemporary uh, scene uh, in New York, who was, uh, who was interesting you at that point? Well, as I say, when I, uh, having developed in Dallas, uh, I would, had, on my own and found Bacon and then in the early 60s, of course, you're exposed to pop artists and so Warhol was still very important and Rosenquist. But upon arriving in New York uh, to begin my career as a student at Cooper Union in Manhattan, 
uh, all of a sudden I was exposed to people like Carl Andre and Robert Morris and uh, Dan Flavin. I think I saw probably his first show at uh, Castelli and uh, Robert Ryman. So it was a big shock for me as a figurative artist, uh, having developed this interest in, in uh, expressionism and what have you, uh, to see that this was the, um, the more, this was the mainstream, it seemed to me to be the mainstream work of the time in New York City. And you were, you were still painting uh, figurative works at that time? I more or less always painted figuratively. I may have done one or two abstract paintings. Uh, what, uh, who was the influence uh, for you in, in terms of the, uh, the selection of the figure as a, as a motif? Well, interestingly, I was uh, introduced through one of my teachers, Paul Georges, to uh, the Figurative Artist Alliance, and that was a group of figurative artists that met in Lower Manhattan on East Broadway every Friday night, and there you would find Philip Perlstein, and uh, you'd find uh, um, Gabriel Latterman, and uh, you'd find uh, many of the, the small, but you know, influential group, Alfred Leslie, I wanted to say. Those people were, Sidney Tillam, uh, were there every Friday arguing about uh, the, we had a kind of an adversarial sense about ourselves that we were, you know, up against the mainstream and we were the, the we were the real rebels and uh, so it was, for a young man, it was uh, very exciting to be in the midst of all these uh, rather cantankerous and, and passionate uh, individuals. Did you see each other's work? Did you have critiques or any kind of forum to, uh, to look at what, what everybody was doing? Uh, people brought in work, so uh, I was bringing in my paintings and, you know, exposing them to people like uh, Pearlstein and getting critiques. And these were sometimes pretty big audiences, uh, uh, 100 people, perhaps, 75 people, 100 people. William Beckman would be there. He was, uh, that's when I met him. And a lot of people that became known later uh, in the figurative uh, movement were, were there. So, yes, it was a real uh, interchange. And between uh, some smaller alternate galleries like Bowery Gallery and First Street Gallery, and, and some of the museum, uh, some of the uh, galleries that were showing figurative art, like uh, Frumpkin, and uh, galleries like that, we we did see we were exposed to, to figurative painting. And then you went to uh, LSU. Yes, after a few winters in New York, and uh, also feeling that I just didn't at that point want to get stuck in a, in a particular clique or a particular group. I wanted a, a fresh perspective on things. I went down with a friend to Louisiana, to Baton Rouge, out into the swamps, and uh, really enjoyed a two, or three day, two or three years there as a graduate student, uh, developing in a more isolated, quieter way. But I was painting there. And I uh, did some big paintings. My first big painting was in New York. I did an 8 by 9 foot painting of a kind of a baroque skyscape full of flying figures and what have you. And in uh, Louisiana, I started a series of uh, paintings having to do with sort of a miraculous blending of uh, the Buddha image with Mao Zedong, who would be showing up at various incongruous spots. So it was sort of a semi-humorous uh, uh, religious painting using Mao as the, uh, the stand-in for the Buddha. And that's what I was doing. Um, and in your formal education at both Cooper and at LSU, anything in particular that, that you find now uh, later as you look back uh, was influential in your development? Anything that happened there? Any influences or any people or anything that was specific to that education? Well, George's was, uh, his work, Paul George's work was influential and uh, I think mutually influential because I think uh, if you know his work, he came to uh, the idea of levitating figures at some point himself. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, also the uh, great emphasis on drawing. I was, in my senior year, I was drawing from the figure about six hours a day. Uh, so a lot of drawing, uh, studio drawing. And uh, then just the ambiance of the, of the city was, was very important. And learning that uh, people could conduct their lives as artists. I, I was uh, exposed to that lifestyle at that point. Um, the, uh, the figure, uh, the, the figure is a central uh, part of your, your work. 
in particular the idea of a, a levitating or a floating figure mm -hmm. or falling sometimes in, in some mm -hmm. of the paintings. Mm -hmm. um, how, did you, how did you arrive at that motif? Mm. Well, even back in high school, I know I'd been reading, uh, in high school I'd been reading some poems by Rilke on uh, the idea of the angelic. So I even though back, back in high school I was doing drawings based on the idea of the angelic. Uh, of course, with a real kind of twist. Um, subsequently, I became interested in Baroque painting, especially the, the big, uh, vast uh, Roman ceilings, which I saw. Went to Italy in 1970 as a, as a young man and uh, saw the Baroque ceilings in the church of St. Ignatius and, uh, and Loyola Church and, and other churches in Rome where you had these vast skyscapes full of bodies and what have you. Likewise, I think just having been an American kid, I mean, I was exposed to Superman and all the superheroes. And so there was, I'm sure there was a more profane uh, influence in terms of uh, that sort of uh, mock heroic uh, idea. Then uh, it's important to point out, I, as a young, as a youngster, as a, as a child, I had a very vivid dreams of having flown. So there was a whole many, many uh, dreams that I had as a young, young person. Uh, flying over fields and valleys, and I'd say the flying dreams lasted into my early, early adulthood. So even in my mid twenties, I was having uh, pretty vivid dreams about flying. You so still that, having those dreams? Not so much anymore. I really miss them. But uh, and uh, oddly, when I have an exhibit and people see these paintings, they often come up and say, you know, I have very vivid dreams of flying, and then I say, well, do you uh, fly like a bird, or you just stick your hands out front and fly like Superman? And I've really kind of almost taken a survey of this, and it's amazing. Some people fly like Superman, some people fly like birds, some people end up falling. I would achieve a certain altitude, and then I'd start falling, but thankfully I would wake up before anything really dire happened.